now, please welcome your host for today's presentation. <laughs> Just watching. <laughs> to work with three species that we have here. We have Pacific Harbor Seals, <gasps> California Sea Lions, and Asian Small Pod Otters. Let's go! Now, I know the first thing you're probably thinking is, wait, sea lions and seals, I thought those things were the same thing. We're here to tell you that they are not. And I have a couple of very special guests to help us point out some key differences. Everybody give a very warm welcome to Joker. Hello! So cute. One of the first things that you're going to notice about Joker here is that he has a very solid brown dark color. Unlike his counterpart here, this is Pirate. Aww. Aww. Pirate is a male Pacific Harbor Seal. Bye bye. And you'll notice that his difference is that he has spots. This is a unique difference between these two. Pacific Harbor Seals have spots. California sea lions are a solid color. Bye! Another key difference between these two, you'll be able to notice as soon as they pop up on their ledges here, are the way they move on the land. Oh my god! So you notice that Joker oh my god, has some really he's so big cute. flippers, right? That he uses to kind of move around. He also has a really cool adaptation that he that allows him to rotate his uh, his hips underneath him to walk on all fours. So as you saw, Brooke was demonstrating earlier how he can move backwards to walk on all fours, like that. He also uses those four flippers in the water to help propel himself. Oh, yeah. So he kind of flaps his arms up and down the bird does when they pop their wings. That's how he moves through the water. And then he uses those hind flippers to kind of steer himself. <laughs> on the other hand, Harper seals like pirates have smaller flippers that they use to help steer themselves through the water and larger hind flippers that they use to propel themselves through the water. So they move back and forth just like a fish kind of moves. On land, however, they kind of do this undulating motion. <laughs> have to have really good abs for that one, right? Now, for those of you who are close enough to see the side of Joker's head or his you'll notice that he has these little strike ears hanging off the side. Those are called ear penne, or external ear flaps. Those of you who are close enough to see Pirate will notice that he does not have ear penne or external ear flaps. Instead, he has little holes on the side of his head. Now, both of these guys talking about ears, um, both of these guys can actually hear the same recognize that from to us. Aww. He's cute! So those are just a couple of the key differences between a California sea lion and a harbor seal. And as I'm up here talking, I'm sure you guys are noticing some really cool behaviors that our animal care specialists are asking these guys to do. Hey. So even though those are some really cool things that we do here, some of the most important things that we do is called husbandry. Now husbandry is just a really fancy word for healthcare, and all of our animals participate in their own healthcare. So, for example, Pirate over here has eye drops and mouth flushes that we give him daily. Just like you and I, we brush their teeth, we flush their mouth out, or at least everybody out there should be nodding at me that they brush their teeth and rinse their mouth, right? Yeah. But we do the same thing for these guys. We want to make sure that any food that we're putting in their mouth gets rinsed out. We don't want anything sitting in their gums and their teeth. We want to make sure that their mouth is healthy. They also do eye drops. So, ten of heads, unfortunately, are a little bit prone to eye issues. So we take necessary precautions, such as giving them eye drops, in order to help prevent some of these issues. 
like I said, these guys do participate in their own health care. So these are trained behaviors. We have trained them to allow us to open their mouth, they rinse their mouth out, we have trained them to target on our hand, we give them eye drops, they sit there and allow us to do these kinds of things. They also have they also do daily weight checks for us. And they can also do some really incredible things like Fail. voluntary blood draws. <laughs> voluntary um, x-rays, ultrasounds, that kind of stuff. Like I said, this is one of the most important things that we train here because we oh. want to make sure that our animals are healthy and healthy at all times. <laughs> like Hi. If there is something wrong with our animals that we find, we do have on-site vets that can be here in just a call. Looks like we're getting ready to say goodbye to Pirate. All right, everybody, let's hear it for Pirate. the most important things that we train. I keep saying this word train, train behaviors, this is what we do. Well, that leads me into the most fun part of our job, which is actually getting to train some of these behaviors. Now, I know you're probably wondering how in the world we need to do that. Well, I'm gonna be joined by another very special guest. He is another Pacific Harbor Seal. His name is Dyson, and him and Animal Care Specialist Clayton are gonna show us a little bit about what we do here for training. Now, the way that we train these animals is actually a style of learning called operant conditioning. Now, all that means, that principle, is whatever you do has a consequence. So right now, Clayton is asking Dyson to present his foot or his flippers, and if he does it correctly, then he gets a fish, or he gets some ice, or he gets some jello, right? Yes. That is called positive reinforcement. Clayton is asking guys and onto his back right now, which is another husbandry behavior, but we have transitioned it into a new behavior. Sit up. <laughs> that is something that we also use here, is teaching a baby, doing baby steps, and then progressing it into larger train, uh, behaviors. I was gonna say trainings. So we typically start out with something such as a target, a hand target, which is what Clayton is doing right there with Dyson. That can transform into turning you on your back and then getting you to do sit-ups together, which then turns into fading the hand target out and learning to do it together. I think that deserves a round of applause. Come on. He needs a word. Okay, Dyson's gonna say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, Dyson. <laughs> so like I was saying, our style of learning is awkward conditioning, which just means that anything that you do has a consequence. Okay. Now, what happens if our animals do something that they're not supposed to, right? Something that we didn't ask them to do or they, they did it incorrectly. Well, all we do is nothing. We move on. We simply just either ask them to repeat it, maybe there was some confusion in what we asked them to do, or they simply don't want to do it, and that is totally okay. So they either tell us, I don't really understand, or no, I don't want to do that, and we simply move on to the next thing. And that's it. We reinforce what we want them to do, and we move on to what we don't want them to do. Alex is going to teach us where, a little bit more Where's Audrey Schmuel? Everyone give Alex a big round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you for a great uh, do you guys have a favorite yet? Seal? Yes. Make some noise for seals. Okay. Sea lions? Even though they're small and cute, these guys are actually apex predators, okay? They're the smallest of the 13 otter species in the world. 
these little guys are at the top of the food chain in their normal environment. You find them a lot in Southeast Asia, in estuaries, in swamps, rice paddies, places like that. A lot of shallow water areas for these guys, okay? But they do have one predator. Does anyone have a guess what that predator might be? Who said us? Uh, you're right, it's us. Me and you, you're sitting next to one right now. Now, that's not to say that we go out and hunt them, whatever the case may be, no. How we hurt these guys actually is through environmental degradation, right? Which is just a fancy way of saying habitat destruction or pollution. Okay, now you notice Mr. Fenway carried out a plastic straw with him, okay? Now, who here goes to restaurants? Don't lie to me. I do. Okay, what about bars? Kids, put your hand down. What is that? I don't want to see that. Alright? Okay, now when you order your drink or you order your water, or in the case maybe, what do they give you 90% of the time? A straw, right? So the easiest way to help these guys is not to drive an electric vehicle or donate money or do beach cleanups. It's to refuse the plastic straw. It's deceptively simple, but it's very, very easy, okay? Because those straws are one of the top three items that end up in the ocean from landfills due to runoff. And plastic, as you probably already know, doesn't break down ever. It just turns into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. Everyone say bye, Mr. Fenway. Bye! That's a very good boy. Now, animals like Mr. Fenway and a lot of other marine species and aquatic animals, what do they eat? Fish, right? Now, fish, what do they eat? Other fish, right? And so on and so forth. So the smaller the fish, the smaller the prey. And all those fish, when they're swimming around, they look at pieces of plastic in the water and they think, man, that looks like a pretty good meal. So they eat it. And it never actually breaks down in their stomach, so a bigger fish eats that fish, and a bigger fish eats that fish. And eventually, Mr. Fenway will swim by, or Mr. Smokey, or Mr. Dyson, or Mr. Joker, and they'll eat that fish. And these guys, Joker eats about 15 pounds of food a day. Dyson eats about 17 pounds of like food you. Mr. Sini <laughs> probably eats about a pound of food a day, right? So you multiply that by the amount of plastic and the amount of fish that they're eating, all that stuff stays in their stomach for a very, very, very long time. It's very hard to pass out. So unfortunately for them, that is one of the major ways that we hurt them. But enough of the, of the depressing stuff. Up here. This is Mr. Wild, give him a big round of applause. This is our biggest and baddest sea lion. Does anyone have a guess how much he weighs? Give me some numbers. 400. Someone said 500. What? 500, you're a rock about there. He's about 500 pounds. He's a very big boy. He's a full grown sea lion. But just because he's 550 pounds does not mean he's not athletic and not agile. These guys can swim up to 25 miles an hour top speed. They can jump about a length or a length and a half of their body out of the water. So they're basically like big, mini tanks. Now, Mr. Wyland is the oldest of all the animals that we have here at Celine City. He's 19 years old. He's a big, full grown guy. But this isn't even as big as some sea lions can get. Some can reach seven, eight, nine hundred pounds or even a thousand pounds. Who here's from the Bay Area? All right, so I'm sure you guys are familiar with San Fran and the piers and all that stuff. I'm sure you've seen all those sea lions over there. A lot of those guys are pushing 900 pounds, 800 pounds, right? So, this guy, even on his head, he moves. And a lot of these behaviors are really fun and they're really excited to learn, but a lot of them take a lot of time and a lot of patience. Now, Wyland is an old pro, but Miss Allie out here, this is only the second time she's ever taken Wyland in the show. So everyone, please give her a big round of applause because they're killing it. Good job! Now we've talked about a lot of things, husband training, hey. show training, right? But one of the best ways to hang out with these guys and build a relationship with them is to just do stuff like this and hang out with them on stage. Right? So I want to thank you guys for visiting us here today and giving them a chance to do this. Give yourselves a big round of applause. And on behalf of all of us here at the United States, thank you guys for coming out today. It's been quite the pleasure. If you would like to see... Oh my God! If you would like to see some more sea lions or seals, head across our little street over here to Silk Cove. We've got five noisy sea lions. I'm sure you will hear them before you see them. You guys have a great day. Thank you.
Like and subscribe, okay? Um, bye!